my dear friends this is a great desire of god that we should know the father we should know jesus our savior and knowing him he is salvation for us john's gospel chapter 17 verse 3 says like that to know you the father and to know me is salvation for my people jesus said my dear friends today's first reading is from the book of genesis chapter 17 to understand genesis chapter 17 we should understand from genesis chapter 12 in chapter 12 we read verse 1 on words god called abram and said you leave your native land you leave your dear and near ones and you choose me as your god and lord and i will be a great treasure for you each one commits one's life for a purpose and blessed is the man who knows the purpose for which who is created and commits his or her life for that only when a person learns to live for the purpose for which god has created him or her the real meaning of life joy and glory is experienced until then we live only for ourselves and this glorious call was given to abram and today it is given to you and me leave everything and begin to love me and walk with me and you will experience what this life is all about and the lord also said in verse 12 chapter verse 2 i will make of you a great nation and i will bless you i will make your name great and you will be a blessing blessing i bless you and you will be a blessing for many this is the call god has given to each one of us my son my daughter whomever you may be in the world whatever may be your identity in the world you are a blessing because you have come from god who is a blessing and god has made you a blessing to be a blessing to this broken world the world is has its own pain and problem and darkness and the answer of god is you and me he has created us to be his blessing to the world but then we read in the same chapter verse 10 onwards when there was famine when there was disturbance when there was no rain abraham instead of looking at the lord and his promises that he has made me a blessing and now there is a problem drought that means i need to remain with him with his word and i will be a blessing even to this situation he is only a learning process so in the learning process he did not know the lord fully so he saw the land is in drought so maybe he made ask the friends and the friends said look there is a beautiful land called egypt river nile is flowing 24 hours and you will have plenty of food to eat jesus said your life is more than what to eat or drink your life is more than your body your stomach your family it is something beyond that beyond your profession beyond your age beyond your family it is connected with the god your life is connected with eternity your life is connected with god's purpose abraham is only in a learning process so he went to egypt and when we move away from what god has given to us we always get into pain and sufferings as long as we move with what god has told us or given us 
a special protective power of God remains with us. The moment we move away for which God has called us, the enemy is waiting. It is there he hits us. As long as we are inside what God has asked us to do, the enemy cannot touch us. And the moment he went away from the land of Cana to which God brought him and to the land of Egypt which is full of evil, evil worship and the enemy entered into the life of Abraham. A blessed man is going through struggles in life. His own wife is taken away. The very family God has kept together was broken. The first thing the enemy will do is to take our hearts and our minds away from the purpose for which God has called us by which our families he will break. He will make our life a miserable. He will bring sin into us. Sin means taking us away from God and from sin he will take us into something called bondage. What is the difference between sin and bondage? Abraham, Abraham is taken away from God's promise and then through the sin he removed from God. He went away from God's way of life for which he was called and his wife was taken away and then the king who took him gave him gave him what? Cattle, flocks and many things on behalf of the lady, the king took it from Abraham. In normal circumstances, a man of God, a sensible man, will be crying, Oh, I came to the wrong place and I have lost my wife. My wife is everything for me. Rather, when he sinned, meaning went away from God, through sin, Satan entered into his life, took away his wife, and in the place of wife, read chapter 12, verse 16, it is written, On her account, it went very well with Abraham, and he received flocks and herds, male and female slaves, male and female asses, and camels. Look, Satan not only took away Abraham's wife from him, but in that place he gave him the animals, the donkeys, and young slaves, young workers, male and female, to help him. And one of the young female who the enemy gave it to him, gave it to Abraham in Egypt is the mother of Ismail. Yes, Hagar. When you go away from God's purpose, he will not only lead you to sin, to go away from God, but he will give you a substitute where your mind and heart will be bound and you will be thinking, that is the pleasure, that is the fun, that is the life. The bondage will cover your mind, it will blind your mind and it will take you into a different world. And Abraham is not even aware that I have sinned against God. I have gone away from God. He is so busy enjoying with the young servants, male and female who are for him. The king had given to him. He was tied up not only with the sin, but also with the bondage. In that moment, we read in chapter 14, where not only he was bound, even his brother's son, who cheated Abraham and took away the best land which God has given to him, called and Sodom and Gomorrah and he is so happy. Now he is being captured by four kings. They came and captured five kings and one of the 
city they overcame was they took over was the town of sodom gomora where lot was living now abraham he is running with the people whom he has caught and he is going and fighting he doesn't understand god is working and in him in all of us god is at work in us that's what we read in philippians chapter 2 verse 13 and ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that god is at work in us that his purpose and plan may be fulfilled in our lives but when we are not alert to the truth we will have our own world which satan has prepared and we will be thinking that is fun that is life and we do not know every part of our life every blessing god has given to us every dream god has kept for us are being broken by the enemy and he is training us to help fire but god is so gracious to abraham and he is gracious to us what he did to abraham he will do for us when abraham is so busy with the cattle maybe when will my camel now four they will become six they will become seven they will become ten that's a kind of fun that a kind of pleasure satan will give it to us that's why in second timothy chapter 1 verse 3 to 4 it is written that these people will be more happy in giving pleasure to themselves than giving pleasure to the lord second timothy chapter 3 verse 4 says like that when we are bound by the enemy we will be busy in fulfilling the pleasure of our body and we will be busy with that running here and there calling upon people doing this and that for what purpose to give pleasure to our body then to think and work for how can I bring pleasure to my God who has loved me? Yes. Now God sent a great king. This man went with his servants and destroyed those four kings and brought victory. But he did not know it is God who is at work in him. Though Abraham forgot God, God never forgot Abraham. His covenant was always faithful. That's why we read in the book of Romans chapter 11 verse 29, The call and gift of God are irrevocable. Once God has called us, He will never simply leave us. Even when we go away from Him and live as we think and destroying ourselves, God will continue to walk with us. Trying to find a chance, an opportunity. A moment you will begin to call upon him. And he will come to rescue us. He will be running behind us. When will we return back to him? When will our eyes be open? When will we come to our senses? And we will call upon him. That is the moment he will come and build us up. That is his grace. Now, Abraham is when he was living in his own way. And with his men, 300 and people, with them he could be able to conquer the four kings which could not be conquered by five other kings. An ordinary man, he never realized, how could I do it? What is the power that is at work in him? He was so happy that I could with my man overcome these five, four kings. And the king of Sodom who was delivered because of Abraham's work he is coming with another great temptation to Abraham. He is going to bring gold and silver and all the riches and tell him Abraham because of you because of you today we are surviving those four kings came and captured our city and took our wives and our children and everything. But you came and you delivered us. So please kindly give. Allow our families, our children, our wives to go back to our towns. And all that 
the enemy is captured from us the gold silver please you take it first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says the riches of this world money is the greatest tool satan uses to take man's heart away from god it's one of the great evil it will make children of god thieves it will make the children of god to have their own little pleasure of collecting money cheating the people and trying to think themselves they have something no through the money they are, they don't have something they have a chance to lose even what they have in the lord they will learn through various beatings they receive from their lives now abraham is going to be tempted by the king of sodom in that moment the gracious god can't afford to see abraham who is already being bound by the evil forces so god is sending a priest called melchizedek who brings bread and wine and giving to abraham saying my son my son god of heaven and earth is blessing you one visit up the anointed servant of god opened the eyes of abraham hope oh, abraham's eyes are opened oh my god who am i i belong to my god of heaven and earth and i have tied up myself with the things of this earth but literally i meant to far not only the blessing of this earth but primarily to the blessings of heaven when his eyes were opened he began to cry he bows before the priest of melchizedek and priest melchizedek and takes the spiritual blessing god gave it to him from heaven the bread and wine and took the priest to his home and gave one tenth of all that he had and honored him saying you open the eyes of mine to the reality only the anointed servants of god anointed word of god can open your eyes invest your time don't simply run commit your life for short mass for where i can complete my obligations no my son no my daughter now god has given us these days in the time of this terrible sickness corona do you know why to invest your time to that which is eternal that which is life giving open your eyes open your hearts to what is eternal what is heavenly don't throw your life for merely what you can get from this earth and die with that the enemy is roaring like a lion this is the moment of grace these days are the days of grace and glory for you god is talking to you open your hearts and understand what is your life is all meant for yes now abraham's eyes are opened and he accepted the priest and took the spiritual blessing and gave one tenth all that you have received from god if that is not meant to give glory to god glory to serve god for the ministry of god the riches you have has no meaning that is the truth and especially we catholics we find it very hard to give it to god today god is teaching us if your life has to be a deeper life one tenth of what you have has to be given to god only then the children of god can do the ministry of the proclamation only then they can do greatly for the lord's work and abram has received it and took his wife and now he is going back yes where you are tied up now god is coming again in chapter 15 and tell him my son you rejected rejected what the king of sodom gives to you you said i don't need this gold otherwise tomorrow you will say i have become rich because of you i don't need this rich 
he told the king what my god has given me is enough my god is my everything god was so happy so in chapter 15 the lord appears to him and says abram your god i will be a great treasure for you i will be a great protection for you i rejoice in you whenever we live for god god rejoices in us yes and but abram he is now with his wife and his wife has not received that experience which abraham abraham has received so she says give me a child give me a child he has heard so he tells the lord when the lord says i will be a great treasure for you lord what is the use lord all my all that you give it to me will be going to my servant eliaser's son i don't have a son so only my servant son will be enjoying the lord said no my son no my son i will give you a generation out of you i will bring a great generation out of you i will bring kings out of you but abram could not understand and today's first reading is coming in chapter 17 where the lord comes to once again and tells him my son unless you are in touch with your thoughts unless you are alert to how you think unless you are mind is guided by god's thoughts god's life will not be found in you it is not enough that you receive the promise of the lord you have to also train your mind and your hearts because as god said in isaiah 55 verse 8 and 10 my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways you are not bearing fruit because you are standing on with your ways and what shall we do in verse 10 he says like the rain and the snow that comes to this earth and makes the dry ground to produce a great crop in the same way when the when the land of your hearts when they open to if you allow for god's thinking and you meditate on god's thinking and you make your life according to the thinking of god that is what our spiritual life is all about it is not doing something or going somewhere else or no hearing the voice of god jesus said in john's gospel chapter 10 my sheep will hear my voice verse 3 in verse 4 how as soon as they hear they will begin to understand my voice and they will obey my voice and they will follow me verse four so hearing the voice of god and by hearing the word of god by reading the word of god by listening to the word of god and then we begin to understand what god wants us to do and then let anything come nothing i will allow to be an obstacle for me no human being no thing will be allowed to be an obstacle for me to fulfill god's voice to be fulfilled in my life if you take that decision and follow the lord as verse 5 says the man who hears the voice of god will begin to understand the voice of god and obey the voice of god follow the voice of god then he will see there are so many other voices are coming to corrupt his voice to take him away from god's thinking and he will say no to them he will bind them he will cast them away he will be constantly alert to take care of his thoughts my thoughts have to be directed by my god that's what isaiah 55:10 said when my god my word comes like rain and the snow it will make the dry ground into fertile ground with a full of water and will bring life out of the dry ground yes god's word 
has to be heard has to be understood and obeyed and lived and so many other voices will come to corrupt the god's voice god's word and we should say no to them tie them up yes when the thief comes the sheep knows they are not my master they are these voices are not my master master's voice and the sheep will run away from the stranger you have to run away if the child of god does means not merely listening to the voice of god understanding the voice of god obeying the voice of god but also has the guts to say no to all the other evil elements that come to lead you to sin and to bondage us yes now abram stands before god god says my son unless your thoughts are directed by my thoughts i can't fulfill the promise that i have given to you yes unless the land is prepared the farmer doesn't sow the seed on the thorny bushes of the land unless a vessel is being cleaned we don't pour milk in that vessel a vessel is not cleaned and if we pour the milk it will get spoil the milk and the vessel yes god is asking us be in touch with your thoughts and be aware of my thoughts and allow your thoughts to be directed by my thoughts only then your land will produce abram i have given so many promises i have made a covenant with you still you are not able to get into my thoughts yes what's your name he says abram abram means what a man who is honorable with the thought i am an honorable man the world has given you honor maybe the riches has given you honor with that you can achieve nothing man your thinking has to be transformed from now on learn to think of yourself as abraham a father of a great so many children great nation if that has to be fulfilled that is the word of god that you are going to be father of a great generation you should take that word of god into your mind and you should repeat what god has given to you has to be repeated again and again and to make alive in every nerves every thinking of our lives because what god has given to us will be attacked by the enemy so we need to constantly tell it and live by it and then it will become our life now abram was told from now on you are no more abram never think of yourself as a man or of honorable one you begin to think and speak my language what is that that i am the father of a great generation i am the father people may laugh at you what you don't have even a son you are going to be you are a father of a great generation don't bother don't bother about what the world thinks hold on to what god tells you and leave it let what god has told you his thought his dream his vision of your life enter into every fiber of your being when abram accepted to become abraham god's promise was fulfilled in his life god called sarai sarai what is the meaning of your name sarai Sarai means you are a prince. You go to the whole world. Look at I am a prince. How beautiful I am! Nothing will happen to you as long as your focus is on you and what God has given to you. Without even thinking it is from God, you are boasting about what you have. You will achieve nothing. That's what the Lord said in Jeremiah nine twenty three. If anyone wants to boast, let him boast on what. the lord has given to him or her yes if you want to boast don't boast the enemy will try to show 101 thing to boast that's why in jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 having experienced this jeremiah prayed to god this beautiful prayer 
Lord, you know that man is not master of his way. Man's life is not within his choice, nor is it for him to direct his steps. Man cannot direct his steps by himself. Yes, Lord. No man, you know, O Lord, that man is not master of his way and he cannot direct his steps. Now Abraham's wife Sarah is also taught, you are no more Sarai. You from now on begin to consider yourself Sarah means you are mother of princess. People may laugh at you when you call Abraham, father of a great generation. Abraham in the field, he may be saying to his wife, Hey Sarah, oh mother of princess. People may laugh at, don't worry. You confess, hold on to what God has given and make it your own. And soon what you confess will be fulfilled in your life. And that's what God did in their lives. And that's what Jesus says in today's gospel. Today's gospel, he says, your father, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Yes, keep alive my word and death will never come near you. Death is roaring like a lion to capture you. But you don't bother about it. You hold on to the word and the death can near, never come to you. Because before Abraham, I am there. I am always there for you. Yesterday I was, today I am and tomorrow I will be. Be in touch with the power of the Lord. The call of the Lord which is much precious, much glorious. He has called you and me and the covenant he has made is different. But be in touch with your thoughts. Unless our thoughts are that of God, all the promise of the Lord will remain only promises. He makes all things new. Surrender your life to him. In his time, he will make all things new, my son, my daughter. Don't cry over what's happening to you. Let your heart cry. Am I doing the will of my God? Am I becoming what God intended me to become? Don't cry over what is not happening to you. Maybe your prayers are not being fulfilled. Don't worry about it. Your prayers is not big than what God want is intended to do in you and through you. Commit your life for that and may your life begin to produce surrender your life to God in his time he will make all things new for you make your thoughts be connected with the Lord's thoughts spend day and night with his word in his time in his time he makes all things beautiful in his time lord please show me every day as you're teaching me your way to do just what you see in your time in your time in your time you make all things beautiful in your time Lord my life to you I bring May each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time. There's a time, there's a time, both for
heart sowing and far reaping. There's a time, my son, my daughter. This is the gracious time God has given to you. This is not a corona time. It's the time God has given you to renew your life, to know who are you, to commit to your life, to be in touch with your thoughts, and live according to the thought of God, according to the word of God. This is a gracious time. Commit your life to Him. Let His will be done in your life. There's a time. There's a time. Both for sowing and for reaping. There's a time. Time for losing. Time for gain. Time for joy and time for pain. Every purpose under heaven has a time. There are times, there are days, weeks and months we cannot understand God's ways. If for years we fail to scan what is His eternal plan, we will remember that He can all that time. Alleluia. 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 Praise God.